Many of Taiwan City volunteers tend to bereaved family members after a fire broke out in Taizong. We see how early intervention programs in Taiwan help children in need develop the abilities to live a normal life. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Taiwan, a fire broke out at midnight of February 13th in Xitun district of Taizong, damaging a two-story house and leaving three residents dead. Upon learning of the accident, city volunteers arrived to offer comfort and support to bereaved family members. At midnight of February 13th, a fire broke out in the house on Taizong's Xitun district. As soon as the fire brigade arrives, they immediately work to rescue a 16-year-old female victim out of the fire. In the ambulance, a medical personnel give her emergency treatment. Later, a 20-year-old male victim is rescued and taken to the hospital as well. Even after emergency treatment, both victims could not be resuscitated. After the firefighters put out the fire, they found the body of a 58-year-old victim lying on the first floor. When the wife of the victim returned home and saw what has transpired, she couldn't hold back her emotions. I had just picked up my husband. He went to Taipei for a school reunion, and he took the bus. I just drove him home. Mrs. Zhang says she just stepped out to buy some groceries at the convenience store, and she couldn't believe that just minutes later, she has lost her three loved family members. The next morning, city volunteers arrive with their condolences. We hope with our company, Ms. Zhang will feel better. After the funeral, we will help her settle down and provide her with much-needed support in the long run. The initial investigation says the fire was caused by a faulty electric wire. City volunteers promise they will continue to offer family members the necessary assistance through this painful time. In Malaysia, city volunteers recently visited two Tamil elementary schools in Malacca to give needy students new uniforms and shoes. In return, teachers adopted bamboo coin banks on behalf of their students in hopes of inspiring the students' compassion to help those in greater need. At the shoe store, city volunteers carefully select gifts for the school children in Malacca. As needy students of Ladan Sangai Baru Tamo School receive new shoes from Tsuji, they can't wait to try them out. Two years. I'm happy to get a new shoe. Meanwhile, at the Kubu Tamo School, Tsuji volunteers give 67 needy students new school uniforms. On rainy days, I can have another set of uniform to wear so I can wear clean clothes interchangeably. Besides, it helps lessen our parents' burden. After they receive new school uniforms from Tsuji, they will be more willing to go to school. What Tsuji did was truly a great help for our students. Putting five cents in the bamboo coin bank is also a way to do good deeds. Teachers of 20 classes adopt and book coin banks on behalf of their students. It not only teaches our students there are those who are worse off than them in society, but also gives them a chance to show their love to the less fortunate. As a teacher of moral education, I will incorporate Siji's humanistic values into my class, so to direct my students on the right path. In Tsuji's philosophy, those on the receiving end also possess the ability to lend a helping hand to those in greater need. Moving to the United States, we join volunteers in Las Vegas of Nevada, South El Monte and the Tsuji San Jose Academy in California to see how they celebrated the Lunar New Year. During the celebration of the Lunar New Year, students and their parents learned about the Chinese zodiac. Here at the San Jose City Academy, a New Year's gathering was held to mark the occasion. Students put on a show skit to entertain participants.
U.S. Tsuji volunteers devote themselves to Tsuji's educational, humanitarian, medical, and charity missions. This is Tsuji volunteer Johan Awo, who joined Tsuji's relief team to help Typhoon Haiyan survivors in the Philippines. At the New Year's gathering at the Tsuji South El Monte Medical Center, he shared his experience with fellow volunteers. <laughs> Director of the U.S. Tsuji Medical Foundation, Ge Jishe, was also there to say a few words on behalf of the Master Zheng Yan. Master Zheng Yan says that team doctors should not only provide medical attention to patients, but also offer them emotional support. We should view our patients as our mentors in medical practice. That's what Suji's humanitarian medicine is all about. Through its various events, Suji's compassion has inspired numerous U.S. citizens to follow in its footsteps. In Las Vegas, Chinatown, a fair was organized to celebrate the Chinese New Year, and several fair goers brought their bamboo coin banks to donate. I'm impressed with the work that the Sushi Foundation has been doing, not only uh, in, in Asia but around the world, especially the fact that you recycle plastics into usable things like uh, uh, blankets and clothing, uh, teaching people how to, how to, how to build schools, how to uh, do vegeta make vegetarian diets. You're doing wonderful work and I support you completely. And Thanks to Tsuji, the repo of love continues to spread far and wide. Prior to the Lantern Festival, medical staff and volunteers at the Darling Tsuji Hospital came together to make glutinous rice balls for their colleagues as a token of appreciation for their devotion to Tsuji's medical mission. And in Hualien, supervisors and staff members of Tsuji's four missions gathered to welcome in the new year at the local Jingsi Hall. <laughs> A dance and sung language performance by the students of the Tsuji Senior High School marks the opening of this New Year's event in Hualien. We are cultivating fields of blessings by educating our children to be talented people of society. We hope to spread the spirit of great love far and wide. Staff members of the Tsuji Foundation and Tsuji's humanitarian mission also joined hands in putting together a show based on the true stories they came across while carrying out relief work in the Philippines following Typhoon Haiyan. As a part of the media, we need to be quick in spreading the right message and safeguarding wisdom. We hope to motivate everyone to cultivate their spirituality and remind them to return to a state of purity. Doctors and medical staff of Tsuji's medical mission sing a song to express their gratitude to all those devoted to carrying out the Buddhist NGO's work. Thanks to the support of Tsuji's four missions, we are able to present our humanitarian spirit and set an example in the medical field. Besides Taiwan, we hope to shine in all corners of the world. Participants at the New Year celebration all vowed to remain devoted to their job in the year ahead and work towards creating a harmonious society. As early as 8 a.m. in the morning, superintendent and supervisors of the Daling Tsuji Hospital are ready to carry out a special mission. Though the Lantern Festival marks the end of the new year, it is not the end for us, but the beginning of a new year and a time to make vows. Hands that normally hold medical tools to save lives now work to make sweet glutinous rice balls. This year we have sweet potato, jute and chocolate flavor sweet glutinous rice balls. Sweet potatoes help us to digest. Jute is healthy for the body and chocolate is just because it is Valentine's Day. Doctors and volunteers hope through warming the hearts and stomachs of their fellow colleagues that they will pass on the love to their patients as well.
To celebrate Valentine's Day last Friday, romantic chocolate treats were a common gift. However, as most chocolates are high in calories and additives, if consumed in excess, they can be harmful for your health. Thus, dietitians recommend dark chocolates with cocoa contents of over 70% as a healthier gift option. Chocolate, a wonderful sensation of perfect delight, is a great gift for all occasions, especially on Valentine's. But did you know over one third of the chocolates on supermarket shelves contains fats and oils? Fats, or refined sugar, sometimes even vanilla essence, these added ingredients can be harmful for our health. There are three types of chocolate that are commonly processed as chocolate bars. Dark chocolate, white chocolate and those that contain an assortment of nuts or dried fruit. A 50 gram dark chocolate bar contains 270 calories, the equivalent to a bowl of rice. Everyone's favorite gold wrapped delight, the Ferrero Rocher, contains 80 calories per chocolate ball. Have four and that's the equivalent of a bowl of rice. Some chocolates also contain additives and trans fat which are harmful to the body. Trans fatty acids and saturated fat can cause clogged arteries. A diet high in saturated fats heightens the risk of cardiovascular disease. Studies show consuming 4 to 5 grams of trans fat a day increases the level of blood cholesterol in our body. Thus, for a healthier option, dietitians recommend chocolate brands that contain at least 70% cocoa or those that are low in trans fat. Taiwan Xinlu Social Welfare Foundation was one of the first to establish an early intervention program 30 years ago to help needy children. In our next report, we meet Jiang Yingqing, who has regained the ability to speak and move thanks to the treatment he received at an early intervention program headed by the Xinlu Social Welfare Foundation. <laughs> Among this group of mentally or physically challenged children is 23-year-old Jiang Yingqing. An accident when Jiang was three years old once left him without the ability to speak and move freely. For this group of children, checking lottery receipts is not only a daily task, but also a good way to build a sense of independence. In the eyes of many, checking lottery receipts is boring. However, counselors have discovered that these children possess hidden talents. When I first came to the foundation, I discovered that he could remember the numbers of winning receipts within the past six months. That's why when he sees a receipt, he can tell if it is a winner or not. Thanks to their counselor's determination and patience, this group of children has slowly discovered their potential. You did 12 sit-ups. He is very good at it because his father taught him when he was young. Today we follow Jiang Yingqing to his second home in Taipei's Eastern District. Long time no see. You came here before the Chinese New Year, right? Your mother called me earlier today. It has been some 20 years since Jiang received help from an early intervention program. No different compared to others, recently Jiang Yingqing has learned a new hobby. What are you drawing? Do you want to draw how you feel when you come back to Xinlu Foundation? Oh. 
我们都觉得我们要。We need to look at what these children can do, and not pick on the things that they have yet to achieve. 人的地方。With a pure heart, everything Jiang Yingqing sees has its own beauty. If you want me to describe him in one word, it would be pure. Simple things make him very happy, and he will keep laughing for a long time. Doina, <laughs> 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 her son has learned to take care of himself. Every day after work, Lan Shuming will pick up Jiang as the foundation before heading home together. Early intervention programs can help children immensely. I never thought that my son would one day be able to take care of himself and become independent. Staying in Taiwan to offer students a safer learning environment, the City Foundation recently signed an agreement with the Ministry of Education and Pingdong Government to help rebuild five schools in Pingdong County, with construction work to begin in June this year. Today, many school buildings are too old to use, so Master Zheng Yin is concerned about student safety. Representatives of the City Foundation, the Pingdong Government, and the Ministry of Education have come together to pledge themselves to the rebuilding of five schools in Pingdong. The capabilities of the government are limited, yet our civic groups have infinite potential. I believe as long as we work together, we can definitely achieve greatness. When I visited one school, I was shocked when I saw the crumbling cement over our heads. That's just scary. The school buildings are over 40 to 50 years old, putting students' lives at risk. The City Foundation will be fully in charge of the renovation projects, so we will do our best to meet the government's requirements. City's charity work has demonstrated the good side of our society. We need to cherish our resources. If we leave those school buildings unattended, they will cause a bigger problem in the future. Thanks to the City Foundation, students in Pindong County will soon enjoy a better and safer learning environment. Mixed City volunteers in Kaohsiung's Nanzi district recently organized a parent and child class in which students got to learn the importance of teamwork through various fun field activities. But first, we join a parent and child class at the city kindergarten in Indonesia's Zengkaren, where volunteers helped with students' moral values through interactive games. <laughs> Dressed in yellow, on stage, Shannon is graceful and poised. Only six, at home, Shannon's lack of focus often gave her mom a headache. But since Shannon joined the parent and child class, her mom has seen great improvements. I want her to be more independent and receive a more well-rounded education. I want her to learn about responsibility and learn to respect her parents and elders. And this little boy met a new friend. Although shy at first, the two are soon talking and joking with one another. I'm happy to be here and meet new friends. We are going to go to moral education class now. From Jinsi Aphrism teachings to learning sign language and craft making, these children enjoy every little bit of what moral education has to offer. With cards stacked up high, the team discusses what they need to look out for. Some even take off their jackets to prevent the wind from blowing the cards over. Each team brings their A-game to come up with a plan to stack the decks of cards. But that's not all that there is. Building a vessel out of newspapers is not easy. Everyone needs to work together in order to succeed. So, what did the children learn from this? We have to work in unity and harmony. When we were building the vessel, I learned about teamwork. There are many activities that require everyone working together as a team in order to succeed. To see them grow up safe and sound is my biggest wish. To see their children grow up safe and sound is the wish of every parent. By taking part in the classes together, parents and their children are gradually cultivating great love to create a more harmonious society.
In Malaysia, a seminar was held at the Klanting Subooks and Cafe in which Ling Xiuxia was invited to share her life story. Ling is a well-known wheelchair dancer in Taiwan who has overcome many challenges in life to see how beautiful life can be even with a disability. Let's take a look. <laughs> Easily controlling the wheelchair with a confident smile on her face is Lin Xiuxia. Lin comes from Taiwan and belongs to a dance troupe whose members are all physically handicapped. Lin suffered from polio since the age of one and finally received corrective surgery in her 20s. Although her surgery was not successful, Lin did not give up on life, but instead sought to arise from her difficulties. I think the things I've experienced in my life aren't that big of a deal. When I think back on them, I'm thankful for them. It is because of my own change of thought and my tiny bit of bravery that these things can happen in my life. Her bumpy path in life has made Lynn realize that, although she lacks mobility, she has plenty of courage to face life's challenges. When an opportunity arises, she accepts it. When things are bad, she accepts it too. She learned acceptance, accepting her imperfections. Most of the time, we only see what we are lacking and don't see what we already have. When she said that, it really hit home. From ballroom dancing to swimming, Lin Xiuxia lets nothing stand in her way and lives her life to the fullest. Everyone is unique and has areas in which they can excel in. In Taiwan's offshore island of Penghu, we meet recycling volunteer Chen Yangzhuan, who is over 70 years of age and has been devoted to recycling work for nearly a decade. Carrying two bags of recyclables on her shoulder, Chen Yangzhuan is often seen in her community doing recycling work. I am not tired. The more I collect, the happier I am. Amitabha. Besides the neighborhood, the senior also travels around the Hoshi Yui Township as well as the Penghu coastline to collect recyclables. We get winds from the northwest direction all the time. You will be surprised to see the amount of wooden sticks on the seashore. Whether it is the debris carried here by the wind or the garbage left behind by tourists, Chen Yangzhuan is happy to pick up any litter she can find. I am grateful. Everyone wants to make money rather than plant good merits. The senior once refused to go out following her husband's passing a decade ago. Today, over 70 years of age, Chen Yang seizes every opportunity to give. I am just happy. I don't get tired when I sort recyclables. Recycling is the best for our planet. These garbage are all gold to me. With some 50 tons of garbage a day in tourist seasons, Chen Yangzhuan vows to preserve the pristine beauty of her hometown through recycling work. Staying in Taiwan since the establishment of the city Banqiao Grounds in New Taipei City 12 years ago, volunteers in charge of cleaning duties can be found on site 365 days a year keeping the environment spotless. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.